still staying with developments in the health sector, the National Association of Resident Doctors, NAD, have embarked on a strike, citing a low hazard allowance and a refusal by the federal government to pay medical residency training funding to some healthcare workers. This is taking place after the expiration of the three-week ultimatum notice. Plus TV Africa correspondent at Debanke Udunuyi has more on this. The purpose of the strike is to push for the review of the hazard allowance paid to health workers to demand payments of the medical residency training funding and more. The resident doctors are um, agitating for the federal government to actually do the needful regarding all the um, agreements or arrangements that have been made to actually ensure that some of the needs of these resident doctors are being met, which uh, the government has actually not done anything about and doesn't seem as if anything is being done. Um, one of these, um, these needs is the provision of um, the group life insurance for doctors and all other healthcare workers and also the um, payment of death in service benefits for um, healthcare workers, doctors that die in the course of um, catering for patients. That's one of them. Now, the other one is the Medical Residency Training Act, in which um, the funding for residency, the funding for the residency training of a resident should be mainly of, from, the, from, the, from the federal government, which um, negotiations and everything have been made, and they promised to actually um, start that payment. But up until now, it's not forthcoming. Another one is the... Um, is the um, review of this hazard allowance, the MIGA 5,000 naira hazard allowance of resident doctors. The doctors in Randall General Hospital, Surulewe, were however seen working and were asked to respond to the news of the strike. This they declined, explaining that they don't have the permission to speak to the press. It was stated that the intervention of political bodies had been the reason for which an earlier strike by the same association for the same reasons was called off in June 2020. The strike was called off then because of the intervention of some um, um, some um, political bodies that actually intervened and um, pleaded with the, and the resident doctors to actually suspend the strike while the um, efforts are being made to ensure that all these needs are being met. But as we speak, the the um, ultimatum has exceeded, and still we are still back to status quo. As at the time of filing this report, the federal government was yet to respond to their demands. To the best of my knowledge, no effort has been made by the government to actually look into this. Among some of the grievances of these striking resident doctors is the small amount of allowances paid to these healthcare workers who risk their life daily to take care of the health of Nigerians. They are asking the government to look into their own welfare and also to deliver on the promises that they have earlier given. Reports for Plus TV Africa, Adebanke. Thank you, Adebanke, for that report. We are now joined live by Dr. Julian Ujebo, the first Vice President, National Association of Resident Doctors of Nigeria, NAD. Thank you very much for joining us on The Breakfast. Now, the Senator Chris Ngige, Minister of Labor and Employment, has said that six out of the eight demands from your organization has been met and you have no reason to be going on strike. What is your reaction to that statement? Um, good morning, Felicity. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. Um, it's no news that um, we're on day two of our industrial action and um, we actually um, did give some thoughts when major stakeholders in the political and the medical framework um, spoke to us um, following talks with uh, the Right Honorable Speaker of the House of Representatives, Senator Kapia Mila, um, Distinguished um, Honorable Member Tanko Sununu, who is the um, Chairman of Hospital Services. We did um, consider to give government time to look into these uh, demands and try to sort all of them amicably. Um, up till now, we do not have concrete um, way forward. Um, saying that six out of our demands have been met may not be entirely true because, um, as we know, um, we talked about um, the payment of the 
has that COVID inducement allowances to all our members all across the nation, and that's still not been done. The government did say they were going to pay for three months and the next three months in the second instance, and up till now, we do not have such payments made to all our members. Um, we've been pushing um, for the group life insurance for our members, debts and benefits of our members. All we have are just paperwork to the fact, and we are not unaware of um, government taxes to delay um, these issues. We also have pending issues like the payment of the medical residency funding. Um, for information on the residency funding, the residency training um, brings doctors to specialist grade level, and if you do not adequately fund this residency training, you are going to have a death of um, the processes of training of specialist um, doctors. And now we are saying that um, the exam fees are getting higher to the, um, to the level that we need some level of help from the government. We are saying that the, um, the processes to train in a single residence is becoming so expensive that we, um, the um, president, it is um, wisdom, did sign into law in 2017, the Medical Residency Training Act. Now, part of that training, um, that part of that act states that the federal government will be funding the, um, the, the resident doctors yearly. Um, this is um, uh, September we're talking about. So if you're supposed to pay residency training funding for the year from January, and up till September, these monies have not been paid, then you know that there's some form of delay tactic by um, government appointees to make sure that um, things don't run smoothly in the country. We're also not unaware of the daily rise in household commodities, daily rise in, um, in um, petroleum motor spirit, daily rise in VATs, you know, so many things that um, these resident doctors need on the daily to solve their day-to-day -day problems are still not been resolved. So if there's an um, increase in every sphere of life by the resident doctor, the biggest sum you've decided to pay uh, medical doctors and healthcare workers all around the country, I don't think that should be a problem at this time. Government should be seen to be um, proactive and making sure that all of these demands that we're making are actually met. But right now, we do not have um, such. So we still um, at the level of mere promises reason why we're saying that we need the um, federal government, the state um, government, to look into this demand, not forgetting the fact that um, most of the state governments are actually owing our members for, for, um, for months. Um, some, some state institutions owing um, our, um, our doctors between um, 12 and 24 months. Some of them are owing up to 48 months, like the case of um, Abia State. Okay, so these are the issues we've been having and we have been we've been having various discourse at different forums with different persons to make sure that we can use dialogue, diplomacy to try and curtail the insistent strikes that we've been having. But we've been noticing that there's continual breakdown of this diplomacy and talks. So the only thing the government seems to respect at this time is an industrial action. We do not want to go on an industrial action. If the government does it fast. The doctors are ready to go back to work today. If the we'll, government we'll, we'll, to we'll, we will uh, take um, uh, some of the issues that uh, you, you. We will be going back to work. Um, uh, doctor, we will take some of the issues and try and um, get better perspective of, uh, with you um, as the program progresses. But staying with uh, the comments from the minister, uh, we understand that there are calls uh, from setting quarters that he not be part of the negotiating team um, any further. Would you say that it has something to do with uh, comments uh, of the likes he just uh, made? I'm not aware of such um, discussion. The Honorable Minister of Labor Previous Senator Dr. Chris Ngege still remains the substantive uh, Minister of Labor, Employment and Productivity. And um, there are hierarchies to every um, decision. Like when you called the National the Nigerian Association of Resident Doctors, you did call the President, and the President did inform me to be on your show this morning because he has other issues that he's addressing. If the Minister, for any reason, do not have um, time to um, um, talk to um, various um, health unions, workers, and, and the likes, he will be making that known publicly. Um, 
he still remains the minister, he still remains the person we go to. Um, there's hierarchy in everything we do, and we have been in touch with him as this um, sitting minister for labor, productivity, and employment. We're not aware that he's no longer the minister, so I do not understand what you mean by um, he should be sitting at the back seat. The government give, gave him, did give him the, um, the seat to dialogue with um, labor unions, and I think um, that is what he's doing. But what we're saying is that we have not come to truth as to the um, payment of these um, um, remunerations as we earlier uh, listed. Like, I, like we've always said, yes, we did um, swear to an oath to protect lives. Yes, we do swear to an oath that our patients will be our first course. But we also did swear to an oath that the welfare of ourselves is as important as the welfare of our doctor. A sane doctor will always produce a sane patient. So if the doctor is not sane, if the doctor is not wealthy, emotionally, physically, um, financially, I think there's going to be financial death of health in that um, patient that he's trying to also give life to, give support to, both emotionally, physically, and mentally. So we want the doctor to be in his complete state of health. Remember that in the definition of health, it's a total package. It's not just one package. So if the health worker, if the doctor, if that house officer, if that um, resident, if that senior resident, if that consultant is in a state of mental stability, he will be stable enough to make sure that his patients, which is his first priority, is given the best of treatment that he's supposed to have. So we are calling on well-meaning Nigerians to talk to um, executive appointees of government, to listen to the yearnings and the cries of healthcare workers all across the country. Mind you, the number of healthcare workers we have as it were, compared to the population, is dwindling so fast that we cannot even cope with the um, overcrowded um, numbers that we have at the moment because there is brain drain on the daily um, because of better remuneration, security, and all the other health packages. So we are right, asking um, the government, for those that have decided to stay, for those that are um, patriotic to say we want to stay back home, give them their due as it. Uh, Dr. Ojebo. and has been enshrined by law of the federal government of Nigeria. The residency training funded is law. They okay, uh, doctor, let's... Law and make sure that these funds are actually produced for these doctors. Uh, we did say we'll come to some of the specifics of your demands, but let's look at it from the other perspective. There are people that say that um, most of what you're going on strike for is allowances and some other payments that are needed, but not that your core salaries um, is affected um, majorly um, that you're going on strike. They are saying that considering the economic realities in the country, is this the best time to be embarking on strike? Yes, yeah, thank you again, Felicity. Um, I've always maintained that there's never a good time to go on an industrial action, and there's never a bad time to also not go on an industrial action. Mind you, what we're talking about are uh, um, remunerations ranging as far back as 2015, 2015, 2016. Members of uh, our body, the Nigerian Assembly Resident Doctors, in the state of Shire Health Institutions, have not been getting their dues for way back as 2017, 2018, 2019. So these are protracted issues. These are prolonged issues. That we've been using dialogue, we've been using diplomacy to try and resolve. But I think that the major problem is that our, um, our strength has become feeble, our, our patience has actually been um, overstretched, and at this point we have no other solution, as it were, to um, getting these demands met once and for all, because they're becoming too protracted. Uh, the, so the, there's a the second the part to that yeah, question. Do your part and okay. make sure that we can do our part, because they're becoming protracted. That's why you're seeing this industrial action at this very time. So these are the issues that we have. It's not as though, um, I, I want you to speak while, while you are at it. We know we're not that hungry. We want to work. We want to serve our people. We want to provide health care. At every level, both at the Dr. Jebo, it's, it's fair. It's a two-way conversation, level. Dr. Jebo. Can you listen? Can you can you hear me, sir? Please go ahead. 
Uh, so when I, I try to interject, so it doesn't look like I'm, you know, interrupting you so much. You just pause so I can add a little question uh, to um, what you're saying. Okay. I'm trying to get uh, thoughts from you as well. Um, I want you to speak to us because when we talk about, I, I mentioned that some of your, um, some people say your salaries are being paid. You're agitating mostly, uh, mostly for allowances and other uh, payment. Uh, but I want you to speak on the emphasis of your association on group life insurance and debt in service uh, benefits. Uh, why are these two so crucial? And what is it that Nigerians are missing um, that is compelling you to insist? on these uh, particular issues? Yeah, over the years, over the years, most of our members have died from various um, infectious diseases. Um, um, most of our members have died in service while trying to give their all to humanity and mankind. And for years, we've been lobbying, we've been um, having various discussions with different, um, different stakeholders, both at the level of the National Assembly where we've met, um, we've had um, discussed with the chairman of actual um, services in the ministry, and there's been no framework to all of these. So we are saying that, we are thinking that this is long protracted. You're saying that you have, um, over time, within our discourse, that you had um, provided some form of um, debt and services to our people, and you've given us the paperwork, but we're telling you, that all of these have not materialized to their immediate family getting what is due them. Just like every other civil servant, just like every other worker, the doctor also deserves his own part death and service package should he die. Now, what actually brought it more to the fore now is um, our members that have died in um, the act of taking care of COVID patients, the contractor, the COVID um, virus itself, and they died from the COVID. We're saying that our members have died from COVID. This is one too many deaths that we've had over time. And we're saying that going back to all our discourses, all the roundtable talks with the various stakeholders, both at the um, Ministry of Labor, both at the Ministry of Health, both at the um, um, National Assembly level, we're saying that can we put all of these, all these services that you said, the, um, the bodies that are in charge to making sure that we get the um, life insurances, the debt and benefit services, you're saying that they are there. We are telling you that they are not there because our members have not gotten all of these um, um, packages that are meant for their loved ones that they left behind. They're saying that they've not gotten them. So our demand is simple. Get us the packages for our members that have died. Ten of them, mind you, ten of them have died from COVID at the last count, okay? So we're saying that the 10 of them that have died and the others that have died over time, can you please get their benefit packages to them? Just like every other worker gets um, in the civil service, but we've, we've not come to terms with that yet. So we are saying that we want these to be done. We are tired of talking, we are tired of complaining. We're tired of the lobbying that has so many breakdowns. But Dr. So if Ajabal, there are no breakdowns, we'll actually not come to this level. Uh, I, I was going to ask, you said you're tired of all of these things. We understand some of the concerns uh, that's been raised by Nan. But then again, we, we read earlier... Um, before we started this conversation, that Johesi is also threatening to go on strike. Is there a connection between your association and Johesi and other health associations um, to kind of figure out maybe some sort of uh, balance so the already damaged uh, health sector is not further brutalized by, you know, a, a total strike in the health sector? Uh, thank you, Felicity. Um... As you know, every association has its organogram, and every organogram has a pattern in which the organogram must follow. Okay, um, we've been in talks with various um, health unions. We've been in talks with the um, nurses and midwives. We've been in talks with the um, 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 pharmacist associations. We've also been in touch with our parent body, the Nigerian Medical Association. And we've been telling them over time, like, these are the issues that we are having at different levels. 
if we can solve them, Paris we pursue, they will actually make a lot of um, um, move. We are going to make a lot of headway. But as it were, there are particular issues that affect individual um, body unions. Okay, these issues are actually particular to these associations. The issues I've raised are particular to our association vis-a-vis -vis the resident doctor has a time-bound training. And within that time-bound training, he's deserving of his funding. He's deserving of his death and benefit because after that time, that time period, you are no longer in the employ or under the employ of the government as it were. You now have to start seeking for employment under the government as a consultant. Well, aren't okay, you so worried? Um, well, our program is time bound. Aren't you we worried of a possible bound. collapse of the health sector if the strike cuts across other associations in the health sector? You are saying we understand each um, um, group has their unique concerns, which is peculiar to them. But if all of you go on strike at the same time, what happens? That's, that's the question. Because at the end of the day, yes, we understand your needs, but there is also a matter of life and death for the patients who depend on you for them to leave. Yeah, we've, we've always factored that into every of our negotiations. We've always factored that. If the government does what it's supposed to do, we will not have that breakdown, okay? You're saying... Solve these issues while we're lobbying. Solve these issues while we're negotiating so that we don't get to the point where we will not have to re re um, revert to using industrial action. So I think the blame here is not on the doctors that have been persevering over time. Okay, look at what I'm telling you about. Salary is being owed to us as far back as 2014. So if you look at it, you see that we've given so much time to the uh, processes of negotiation, lobbying, and diplomacy. What would you, if you, if you, were, asked to, if you were asked to suggest, what do you think is responsible for these repeated seeming um, lack of adherence to agreements reached um, with the federal government on the part of the federal government? And how would you suggest quickly that they speed up action so that we don't see such strikes going forward? Policy and decision making. For every policy that you make, it has to be backed by, by, by real, um, real power of you to actually do what you're supposed to do. Now we're saying that we've always agitated that during every policy making, the Nigerian Association of Resident Doctors wants to be at the forefront of those policy making. So we can tell you because we are like the foot soldiers. We are the go-to when it comes to um, residency training and specialist training in the country. We are saying that we know these critical issues and when these policies are about to be made, we want to be part and parcel of them so that we can pinpoint where you're lagging behind, where you're failing, and tell you that this has to be um, improved upon and this other, other aspect has to be improved upon. So what we're saying in, in collective is that the breakdown in law and order is not from, um, from the sides of the um, resident doctors because we have been patient for a very long time. So we, do, we don't have any other cost but to actually resolve to um, having um, this industrial action as at this time. So Dr. we're saying, Julian, uh, engage us at the level of policy making. When you engage us at the level of policy making, we can pinpoint to you and say, these are the um, pertinent issues. These are the issues that have actually um, be uh, bedeviling the sector, as it were. Why is Dr. the report Julian. of the um, National Health Summit that we did and presented to the federal government? I'm afraid that's the much time will permit us on this segment of uh, the program. Thank you so much uh, for your time with us on The Breakfast. And uh, we wish you all the best you with uh, your conversations with the government. Thank you so very much. Thank you for having me.